There is no other God like our God. That's why Lord would say, Are you the God, the Almighty God? You know be my Lord. You know be my Lord. Are you the God, the Almighty God? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm acknowledging you for who you are, for what you've done. Give my life, oh, I'm acknowledging you for who you are. And thank you, Oh, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, hallelujah. Let's celebrate the choir. Let's celebrate the choir. Let's just appreciate God. Praise the Lord. It's a beautiful day. Amen. Can you open your Bible with me to Second Chronic Chronicle? Second Chronicle. Chapter thirty. We'll be taking our reading from verse number twenty one till the end. Second Chronicles chapter thirty. Be reading from verse number twenty one to the last verse of that chapter. If you are there, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Please can we stand as we take the reading together? We'll take the reading together after the cants. Doesn't matter the translation that you are holding. Amen. One, two, go. So the children of Israel who are present at Jerusalem kept the feast of the unliving bread seven days with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing to the Lord, accompanied by loud instruments. And Ezekiah gave encouragement to all the Levites who taught the good knowledge of the Lord. And they ate throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offering and making confession to the Lord, the God of their fathers. Then the whole assembly agreed to keep the feast another seven days, and they kept it another seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah, king of Judah, gave to the assembly a thousand bull, seven thousand sheep. And the leader gave to the assembly a thousand bull and ten thousand sheep. And a great number of priests sanctified themselves. The whole assembly of Judah rejoiced, also the priests and the Levites, and all the assembly that came from Israel, the sojourners, who came from the land of Israel and those who dwell in Judah. So there was a great joy in Jerusalem. For since the time of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel, there has never been nothing like this in Jerusalem. Then the priest, the Levites, arose and blessed the people. And their voice was heard. And their prayer came up to his holy dwelling place, to heavens. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our heart in Jesus' name. Please take your seat in the presence of the Lord this morning. Let me start by reminding everyone in the house, Pastor Dari did a bit of that, particularly for our visitors, that as a church, we are still in our season of Thanksgiving. And may I remind you that the theme for our Thanksgiving this year is ever-increasing thanksgiving. And this theme is relevant to what I believe that God desires us to look at this morning. And so I'll be sharing in the topic, Continuing Thanksgiving, Provoking the Release of Heaven's Blessing. Continuing Thanksgiving, Provoking the Release of Heaven's Blessing. What's the emphasis? The emphasis is to remind every man, woman, boy, and girl in the house this morning that our praise, our thanksgiving to the King of kings and to the Lord of lords must not be limited to a specific time and space, but rather that the entirety of your life and my life should be lived daily as a symphony of thanksgiving. It is not surprising, therefore, that David said clearly, I believe in Psalm 150, that let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Meaning that for every breathing in and breathing out, your life should go on to God as what? As a thanks offering. This is more so because we are integral part of God's awesome creation, which necessarily makes us his people, the sheep of his pasture. 
and we are distinctively created by God to give him pleasure. And I dare say that nothing gives God's pleasure more than the praise from you. I have no doubt in my mind that when the angels of the Lord praises him, he's happy. When the 24 elders cast down their crown every day before the Lord, he's glad. But there is absolutely nothing that excites the heart of God, that thrills the heart of God, than a praise and a thanks offering from you. God is glad and is ever glad whenever folks, like brethren in New Essay Baptist Church, decides to give him a sacrifice of thanks offering. The text that we have just read from the Old Testament was set against the background of an important feast or festival among the people of Israel, the feast of the bread of the unliving bread. It is a feast or a festival that serves as a reminder and a thanksgiving for the deliverance of God for his people from captivity, from affliction, from oppression of Egypt. And if you recall last Sunday, Pastor Kay reminded us one of the reasons why we should give thanks. And what he said is that we give thanks to God because of his deliverance. And that says to me that God as our deliverer deserves our what? Our thanks offering. This feast or festival of, of the unliving bread is a prototype of our annual Thanksgiving service. And from what we can glean, particularly from verse 21 of the text that we just read this morning, that feast is celebrated for seven days. And in these seven days, the scripture recorded that people came from everywhere, from all of the tribe of Israel. And they gathered together in Jerusalem to offer thanksgiving unto the Lord, to offer dances unto the Lord, to offer sacrifices unto the Lord. And they raised up an instrument of worship to Jehovah God. However, just a bit forward in verse 23, something happened there. The people decided to do the unusual. And I believe that they decided to do the unusual because that they are like folks here in New Estate Baptist Church who are believing God for unusual breakthrough. The scripture recorded for us that everyone who gathered together in Jerusalem on that day, without exception, no dissent whatsoever, agreed to extend the celebration of the feast beyond the customary seven days. In other words, Israel decided to give God a continuing thanks offering. As a people, they decided to jettison tradition for revelation. They gave up the usual for the unusual and traded the ordinary for the extraordinary. The question in any discerning mind this morning is to ask, why did they decide to break with the tradition and do the unusual? I believe with all of my heart, especially looking at verse 27 of our text, that these people desire to provoke the release of the blessings of heaven over their lives. The people of Israel realize that there is still more in God for any soul that is willing to pant after him like the day pants after the waters. They realize that there is a wealth of inexhaustible blessing in the heavenly places that can be released simply by offering God a continuing thanks offering. And so they perhaps says in their mind, that which I am believing God that which is located, the blessings of God that is located for me in the heavenly places, perhaps I can draw down on it by giving God more thanksgiving for just one more day. Perhaps for just one more week. Perhaps for just one more month. And perhaps for just one more year. It's so quick in the heart of everyone who has been thanking God and wondering, I've been thanking him, what has happened? Give him praise and thanks for one more day. Give him praise and thanks for one more week. Give him praise and thanks for one more month. Give him praise and thanks for one more year. Praise the Lord. Fast forward to the New Testament. And you will see what the great apostle, Paul, giving what I call a, a, an explicit revelational truth of what we have just seen when he said in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, he said, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
Brethren, there's so much of God's blessing in Christ Jesus for you and I in the heavenly places. And I believe with all of my heart that continuous thanksgiving is one sure and certain way for you to draw down of all those blessings. All God is asking you to do as you offer him thanks offering is to write your check, your negotiable instruments and lay it at the vault of heaven for the release of those blessings that are laid off for you. And how do I know that? Philippians 4 and verse 6 said it clearly. Have anxiety about what? About nothing. But rather, through prayers and supplication that is laced, packaged, and, and, and contained in what? In thanksgiving. Let all your requests be made known unto God. And what will happen? The peace of God concerning that situation. The peace of God, the rest of God concerning that situation. The calmness of God concerning that situation. We garrison your heart and your mind. Praise the Lord. Let me amplify again on some of the things that Pastor K shared with us. And I'll be looking at three reasons this morning why you and I must continue to give to the Lord continue thanksgiving. Number one, because God demands it. Hebrew chapter 13 and verse 15. And unambiguously stated that through Christ Jesus, therefore, let us continually, how? Continually offer unto God the sacrifice of praise, the fruits of our lips, giving what? Giving thanks to him. It is not a one-off thing. It should be done continually. And so in and out of season, God is saying, continue to offer me a sacrifice of praise and of thanksgiving. Number two, because it is a way of affirming our conviction that is coming back again. Amen. A little over 2,000 years ago, he left in the cloud of glory. And in Acts chapter 1 and verse 11, he told the disciples, he said, I'm coming back again. Amen. And it seems as if we are living in a world that we have forgotten that the King of kings and the Lord of lords is soon coming back. And there's no better way than the generation of those who believe in the Lord can testify to the unbelieving world that Jesus Christ is coming back again than to offer him a continuous thanks offering. They set an example for us in Luke chapter 24 and verse 52. Immediately he was taken away from them. And he disappeared in the cloud of glory. The Bible says the early disciples began to do what? They began to worship him. And so our continuous thanksgiving is a way of te telling our world that the king of kings and the lord of lords is coming back again. Praise the Lord. The number three reason why you and I must continue to offer unto the Lord a continued thanks offering is to provoke the release of the blessings of God over our lives. Thanksgiving is your access gate into the treasure room that is called the throne of grace. The Bible says, let us therefore come, how? Boldly unto the throne of grace that we may receive what grace and mercy to help us in the times of our needs. Folks, you need grace and mercy to journey in this side of eternity. Pastor just reminded us, or someone reminded us earlier on that it's six weeks to the end of the year. You don't know how to get to that finish line. You don't have the key to that finish line. And that's why you need the grace and mercy of God. You have never walked in the year 2017 before. You don't know what he has in stock at all. You don't know the mountains and the valley that is in the year 2017. But I tell you, when grace and mercy of God appears for you, you will mount like wings of eagle. You will soar above the circumstances. So you require grace and mercy. And that grace and mercy is only available in the throne or before the throne of grace. And how do you go there? Enter his gate with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Praise the Lord. And as we try to tidy up what I believe is just a sharing, the obvious question that perhaps you are asking, what type of 
blessing will be released from heaven when I continually offer the Lord a continued thanks offering. We look at three and then we round up. Number one, continue thanksgiving to the Lord will provoke the release of his glory upon your life. Continue thanksgiving to the Lord will provoke the release of his glory upon your life. Church, how awesome is it for a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, a family, a church, and a nation to experience firsthand the glory of God. Moses, the servant of the Lord, has seen the miraculous. He saw the Red Sea parted. He saw the manna came down from heaven. He saw the quail from the sky. He saw water out of the rock. And yet, there was a subtle cry in his heart, which was shown in Exodus chapter 33. He said, God, if I found favor with you, show me your glory. How I pray in this season of ever-increasing thanksgiving, that will be your prayer. And my prayer for each and everyone hearing me this morning, is that as you offer to God a continuous thanks offering, the glory of the Lord will be seen upon your life. That situation is prostrate. You are prostrate. You are limited. Why? Because the glory of the Lord has not appeared. Isaiah 61 says, Arise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon your life. There is no prostrate situation that can stand the glory of the Lord. There is no difficult situation that can stand the glory of the Lord. And so when the glory of the Lord comes, it is impossible for a man not to rise. The glory of the Lord is the manifest presence of God. Oh church, how we need his manifest presence in our lives. In the face of several uncertainty. How we need the, the manifest presence of God in our homes and our community in the midst of turbulence and storms. Oh, how we need his manifest presence in our businesses in the face of recession and depression. In 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 65, Solomon offered unto the Lord a continuous thanksgiving. And in 1 Kings chapter 9, the next chapter, the Bible says that the presence of God appeared and gave him a black blank check and address the question of his future. In this season, therefore, of ever increasing thanksgiving, may the glory of the Lord show up for you and address every fear you have concerning your tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen. There are many here this morning that their tomorrow is already asking them questions concerning their health. Their tomorrow is already asking them questions concerning their marriage. Their tomorrow is already asking them questions concerning their children and their careers. And they simply don't have an answer. And they live daily in fear. I bring you a word of hope and comfort this morning. That the Lord of glory will appear and address every question that your tomorrow is already asking today in Jesus' name. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Jehoshaphat and the entire nation of Israel or Judah they had a value of disgrace, destruction, and death set before them. But in verse 21 of that chapter, the Bible says they decided by the word of the Lord to do what? To give to God a continuous thanksgiving. And so as they began to journey into the valley that the enemy has earmarked for them to become for them a valley of death, of disgrace, of destruction, by the time they got there with the praise of God in their mouth, God turned that valley to become a valley of thanksgiving. I don't know what valley you are in right now. And honestly, I don't know the valley that is confronting you. But this is a season of ever-increasing thanksgiving. And as you take God by his word and offer him a thanks offering continually, I pray for you that that valley of shame and disgrace will become a valley of honor for you. I pray for you that that valley of failure will become a valley of success for you. I declare that the valley of death will become for you the valley of life. And that valley of disappointment will become for you the valley of opportunities in the mighty name of Jesus. I saw what the glory of the Lord did in the valley of the dry bone. A mighty glorious army came up from the midst of that. Number two, continuing thanksgiving to the Lord will provoke the release of the spirit of love upon your life. Praise the Lord. Church, God's greatest gift and blessing to humanity is love. 
Why do I say that? First John chapter 4 and verse 8 said it clearly. It said God is what? God is love. And so it's about God indwelling us himself. When he releases his spirit of love over your life. It is therefore now not surprising when the writer of Romans in Romans chapter 5 and verse 5 says, he said, hope cannot disappoint us. Why? Because the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by his Holy Spirit. How come then that we are not walking in love as God's children? Everything is simply because the Holy Spirit has not been shed abroad in our hearts. And how come that the Holy Spirit has not been shed abroad in our hearts? It is simply because of what you see in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3 to verse 4. We are not offering the fruits of leaves confessing his name. Instead, it is filthiness, covetousness, bitterness, malice, cast jokes and the like. And you remember what happened in Genesis chapter 8 and verse 9. When after there has been a decimation of the earth, and Noah and the whole lot that was with him and the animal were packaged in the ark. The Lord said, uh, the scripture told us, that Noah took a dove, a symbolism or a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And he sent him out. And the Bible says that the, the dove went out. But there was no place for the soul of that, of that dove to stay. So he did what? He returned. Our lives, our homes, our churches, our communities in the world of Isaiah chapter 32 verse 13 to verse 14 has become desolate dens, cattle of Jaka, forsaken cities full of thorns because love has taken flight. As the Holy Spirit has no place to place his feet in the midst of the ruins occasion by bitterness, by envy, by self-centeredness, by covetousness, what then do we do so that the Holy Spirit may find a place for his feet in our lives. Ephesians 5 and verse 4b says that we should continually be giving thanks unto the Lord. As we continue to give thanks, so much of space we give for the Holy Spirit. So this morning, let spouse begin to thank God for each other again. Let children begin to thank God for their parents. Let parents begin to thank God even for their children again. Let church folks begin to thank God for their pastors and their leaders again. And let us all as a nation and as a people begin to thank God for Nigeria again. The more thanks we offer, the more space we create for the Holy Spirit in our lives, in our homes, in our communities and in our nation. And when the Holy Spirit is poured down from on high, Isaiah 32 and verse 15 says, the wilderness will become a fruitful field. And the fruitful field of our lives will become like a forest. Praise the Lord. Number three, continue thanksgiving to the Lord. We provoke the release of the spirit of wisdom over your life. We're dealing with spiritual blessings that you require in order for you to draw down, in order for you to live your life successfully. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 5 and verse 15 to 20. Give us the life skill to surviving and thriving in perilous times that we are living in. Don't be deceived, folks. These are perilous times. I was telling someone the other day, I said, I read, I read news, you understand? I, I read news like, like almost every day. In fact, I, I was telling Stadiola the other day at, when we were attending program, I said, look, I want to start fasting news now so that you understand you can keep news a bit out of your life. Praise the Lord. However, there's something that struck me. There is no day you pick any of this newspaper that you will not see a 40-year-old man or 30-year-old man defining a 2-year or 3-year-old. And I'm asking myself, what is going on? Perilous times. And I'm like, look, has the world gone mad? Three years, five years, six years. Praise the Lord. And so, how do we survive these perilous times? We need wisdom. The key to surviving the seasons of our life is wisdom. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15 charged us to be wise. So, why wisdom? 
Proverbs 4 and verse 7 tells us that wisdom is what? Is the principal thing. So get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. One key wisdom that you and I require to live above frustration and defeat is the wisdom to understand the season of our lives. Folks, if you don't understand your season, it is going to be frustration and confusion all the way. Scripture tells us of the sons of Issachar. The Bible says they understood the times and they knew exactly what Israel should do. The reason for this is because everything under the heaven on this side of eternity is defined within times and season. Praise the Lord. It is therefore imperative for you to know what to do and how to respond to the seasons of your life in order to get the best out of it. There are young people here, there are old people here this morning that are at various crossroads of life, various crossroads of decision that need wisdom of God to decide what to do. I love the, I, I love the psalmist, David, severally. He will say, God, show me the way that I should go. Wisdom is that voice behind you that always tells you, this is the way, walk ye therefore in it. Paul, by the Holy Spirit in verse 20 of Ephesians chapter 5, gives us the master key to unlocking the treasure of wisdom in order for you and I to survive and thrive in this season. And what's that master key? He said, give thanks always for all things unto God. Give thanks always. So if you are in a lean season right now, give thanks. If you are in a season of abundance, give thanks. If you are in the season of your singleness, give thanks. If you are in the season of your barrenness, break forth into singing. If you are in the season of your obscurity, give thanks anyhow. If you are high on the mountain or low in the valley, give thanks. For the business that you won so far this year, give thanks. For the one that you lost, give thanks. Let me say that the wisdom of God will increase in your life in proportion to the thanksgiving that you give. And wisdom is what will remind you that your life cannot be defined by the experience of just one season. Amen. Life comes in both dry and rainy season. Just imagine that all that we have from January to December is rainy season. Many people will move out of Lagos. <laughs> Amen. Because God knows that if all that he supplies us in Lagos is rain, there are several areas in Lagos that we even part view will go underwater. Praise the Lord. So he interprets it. There are the dry season and there are the, 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 the wet season. So every season has its benefit in your life. And God orders it that way. And so celebrate every season of your life. Wisdom will help you to remind and to remind you that it is better to be a living dog than be a dead lion. Amen. Every time that you are complaining, wisdom will remind you it could, be, it could be worse. It could be far terrible than this. Amen. It's better to be a living dog than to be a dead lion. Whatever you are not thankful for will soon live your life. Whatever you are not thankful for, it will soon live your life. And so it's time to stop complaining about what we do not have. And start being thankful for all that God has given to us. In conclusion, let me assure you that no matter how you think 2016 has dealt with you, your best days is still ahead in Jesus' name. I say your best days is still ahead in Jesus' name. So it's time for you to stay calm and keep sowing the seed of thanksgiving. Reminding yourself that after all, it was in the time of famine that Isaac sowed. And he reaped in hundred folds. I ask that the Lord bless you. As you walk in obedience of his word. Bringing into your life wisdom. Revealing in your life his glory. 
and showing his love and shedding his love abroad in your heart. Please can you will stand up as we bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like now. to the Lord and give him thanks from the depth of your heart. I need you to thank him specifically for that situation that you are worried about right now. That issue that is troubling your heart is the same issue that I want you to bless the Lord for. Just exalt it. God, I thank you. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for the season of my singleness because I know that the day of my rejoicing is coming. I, I, I thank you, Lord, for my health. It doesn't matter what the prognosis and the diagnosis is right now. Lord, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, oh God, because you are my healer. I thank you, I thank you. Just thank you for that business. Thank you for that business. Thank you for those children. 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 It's looking as if there is no future. But hear me. There's a glory of the Lord. There is a glory. There is a glory. There is a glory. And whenever the glory of the Lord appear in any situation, there is bound to be a change. I see the glory of the Lord over those children. I see the glory of the Lord over those children. It's time to just thank God. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank him. Thank him. Just give him praise this morning. Just worship him. Just worship him and say, God, a continued thanks offering must well up in the inside of me unto you. Because there must be a release. There must be a release. There must be a release. A definite release of God over my circumstances and over my situation. 
Or it is not an accident that you say this is a year of unusual breakthrough and you have tagged this year's Thanksgiving as a Thanksgiving of ever increasing Thanksgiving. You did not give a word to the set man in the house for vain. He said, my word that I have spoken to you, they will not return back to you void until they have accomplished the very purpose for which I have sent them. God has sent his word this morning to reveal his glory in your life. He has sent his word to pour his love upon your heart. He has sent his word to release your, his wisdom upon you this morning. Just appreciate him. God will bless you this morning. Lord, we exalt you this morning. Lord, we celebrate you this morning. You're such a faithful God. You're such a loving God. You're such a compassionate God. Oh, what is man that I am mindful of him? How come, Lord, our praise matters to you than the praise of the angels? How come our worship matters to you than the casting down of the crown by the 24 elders? Who are we, O oh God, to deserve all that you have blessed us with? Who are we that we should even be alive this morning? Who are we, O oh God, that you should pour your kindness this much upon our lives? Who are we, O oh God, to receive all of this goodness that we receive? Who are we, O oh God, to be able to move our legs and move our limbs? Who are we, O oh God, to have eyes to see all of the beauty that you have created in your world? Who are we, O oh God, to have a voice to praise you? Who are we, O oh God? Who are we, O oh God? Who are we? Who are we? Who are we, O oh God? But for your mercy, for your goodness, for your love over our lives. See how you took us from January. See how you took us through February. Now we are in November. And November is just about closing up. One more month and 2016 is over. It is mercy and grace that has kept us this far. It is the generosity of your heart that has kept us this far. It is your goodness that has said to us, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. God, our heart wells up. Our children go out in the morning. They come back in the evening. In the midst of all of the crisis. In the midst of all of the difficulties, in the midst of the predators, oh God, that fills the whole earth. You have led your people, you have brought them upon the wings, they flew in the aircraft. In the same year, there are several crashes. God, you took them by the road that has led to the loss of several lives. Every morning, they leave their home, go to work, and they come back. It is simply your mercy. It is simply your grace. It is simply your goodness. Oh, Sunday in, Sunday out, we come here. There's never been a disruption to our worship. You give us substance to appreciate you. You give us substance to worship you. Who are we, oh God? Who are we? Mere mortals shaped in clay. But you breathed upon us and we became living souls. We give you thanks this morning. We appreciate you because we know, oh God, there's a place in you that you are taking us to. The year is not done yet. It is not over yet. There's yet so much loaded for us. There's yet so much, oh God, that you want to pour into us. God, we empty ourselves this morning. As we begin to do your will in our lives the rest of the year. Fill us, O oh God. Fill us, O oh Lord, with your life.